Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Uh, I just recently turned 58 years old and started dual sport riding last year around July. Because every time I would have an accident on the trail, single track or dual track in the forest, I ended up upgrading my equipment to protect my body better since I'm an older person that uh, doesn't flex anymore. So here's my uh, advice or my reviews on my personal choices of equipment that I've used in the process of outfitting myself for pure safety reasons and to keep my bones in one piece instead of snapping. We'll get into some little details and I'll explain to you why I've made my particular choices on certain gear. Thanks for uh, staying tuned. <laughs> start off with some boots uh, originally I bought these because I bought myself a BMW F750 GS and I figured I would be doing trail adventure riding and road touring all in the same vehicle I bought these boots these are the Forma adventure low boots with their uh, dried X uh, membrane liner and out dry leather boot it is a super lightweight boot. I highly recommend this boot if you want to do touring or any time of dirt road or gravel road use because it is a very comfortable boot out of the box. It is very flexible. Uh, and that is the problem when you're trail riding because my first high side in a mud pit, my ankle went under the bike and basically I twisted my ankle and it took about six weeks before it healed up. But apart from that, it is a great boot. I wear this boot daily all the time. It's got a great liner. It's waterproof up to here. I've had this through heavy rain and no problems. So the reason why I've upgraded my boot onto trails is just for better ankle support and protection and toe protection. So great boot for off-roading. If you're on dirt roads or gravel roads or just on the asphalt, super boot, highly recommend it, super comfortable. You could hike in these boots if you wanna go off, off a trail and uh, do some mountain climbing for sightseeing or just walking around town. They're not that heavy, they're a super great boot. So I upgraded from the Forma low boot to the City Adventure 2 boot. For the fact is one, it's Gore-Tex lined, pretty much right up to here. There's only about three inches from the top of the boot that's not Gore-Tex protected with the membrane. Uh, it has the anti-torque, so your ankle is fully protected laterally. And I used this boot for three months without any issues, except for when I was in a single track trail, I caught my foot in between a stump and the side of the bike, because the bike doesn't move, and I almost smashed and broke my little toe because although it is protected up here, it is still just leather here on the side, so it is compressible. Uh, I've had this boot in streams. Uh, it's a lightweight boot as well. It flexes very well. It was a little stiff new out of the box, but overall this is a great boot if you want to hit the trails and not worry about any water infiltration into your foot. Super duper. They're also a low cut front so you can get under your shifter quite easily. But because I hit that stump and almost broke my small toe, in my head it was another time to upgrade the boot and basically uh, give my foot full protection since I'll be doing a lot of uh, single track uh, in some forest trails. 
So the next upgrade, I went full motocross. I went and bought the Fox Motion X boots off-road, which is uh, the X is because they're fully waterproof compared to just the Motion boot. It has the full TPU body and it is a full waterproof membrane. So this boot though, right out of the box, super comfortable like a slipper very loose to start off with they're not stiff so i had no issues at all to use this boot it has got the uh, off-road trail tread compared to the other boot which is more smoother and uh, it's got the full gore-tex liner or not gore-tex it's got their own uh, waterproof membrane liner which basically goes up to here so you're okay to go in the waters going into the streams it's got a super comfortable inside uh, membrane. Very comfortable boot. But what I really liked about the boot was that it's fully TPU. My foot, ankles, torsion, heels, back of your calves. Fully protected. Nice grip. What's nice is it's smooth here so you can grip your bike easily and I think this was the best route for me it's got a good solid sole so when you're standing up on the pegs you don't get that fatigue so that was the next protection I required and I think this was the best way in my evolution for foot protection so the Formo is great for off-roading lightly uh, touring road everyday use but when it comes to my trails on my CRF 300L, as opposed to the BMW 750GS, this is my go-to boot all the time now. I wear this all the time. The... So my first ride out, as I mentioned, with my Forma boots, I wore like all adventure riders, some kind of an adventure suit, which I love the Ruka. I bought this in 2016 and it's like mint shape uh, i wash it uh, pretty much a couple of times per season with tech wash which is designed for this type of jacket it's the gore-tex pro so there's no liner you have to zip in and out it's uh, integrated into the material it also comes with a small winter liner uh, it keeps you warm a little bit but not that much but what's nice about it, it has all the D3O shoulder, elbow, and back protection on it. This particular jacket does not have the chest protector. So as I mentioned on my first uh, fall, I did a small uh, high side. I clipped my rib cage, bruised three ribs. That took about two months to heal along with this twisted ankle because the boot had no ankle support or protection. So although this is great for adventure riding, uh, touring or whatnot, this is definitely not an off-road equipment type jacket. So the next thing I went up to was, the second integration was, I went and bought the Alpine Stars Bionic Action Chest Protector because I did catch my ribs on the side and this has nice side protection. The only thing is, is the CE rating is quite low. Basically, it is just a bit of foam with a hard plastic uh, shell for rocks. And it does cover your rib cage slightly better. What I did like about this is it's super light. It allows a lot of good airflow. But when it came to shoulder protection, there was none and there was no elbow protection. So I figured, hey, Let's see if I could just buy some shoulder protectors. But believe it or not, Alpine Star, you cannot buy just shoulder protectors. So the next step up to get some shoulder protection, I ended up buying the uh, Alpine Stars A6 Chex protector, which is pretty much the same, except for it comes with shoulder pads. And why they don't sell these separately, because they're only Velcroed on. I could take this shoulder pad and put it on this one here, but they don't sell it separately, unfortunately. So you gotta buy a whole new chest protector. And the chest protector is slightly upgraded a bit. It's got more ventilation in the side, whereas this doesn't have any ventilation on the side. Although this 
foam is a little thinner compared to this foam actually is less thicker I should say so as far as I'm concerned the CE protection on here even though it says it is CE certified there's not a lot of protection here it's basically hard plastic and your rib cage so not bad upgrade for the beginners like I said it's an evolution of my safety gear when I'm starting to use it so it does come with basically uh, some CE level 1 shoulder protection here which is not bad and that actually saved my collarbone on a right hand high side when I tried to jump a ditch and the front tire jackknifed in it that if I didn't have this shoulder pad on I probably would have broke my collarbone so it did help me and again that took a long time for the collarbone to heal and at the same time I ended up buying the uh, Alpine Stars Bionic Flex elbow guards that went with this so I was figuring I was fully protected here now with the Bionic Flex elbow guards super soft but it's very limited on the CE level one again there's not a lot of impact cushioning so it's basically plastic with a tiny piece of foam in the back so if you are going to get hit hard, it's going to transfer, it's not going to dis uh, dissipate like a D3O. And it's got a little bit of foam here for your front forearm protection here. So, so after a few accidents, I still wasn't satisfied on the protection that this type of gear is giving me. Even though it's going to give you some protection, maybe if you're a younger person and your body flexes a bit better, this will do fine for you. Uh, great airflow like I mentioned but for me as an older guy I wanted to make sure I had uh, the best protection so when I do a flip or a crash uh, I want to be protected fully so here's my next uh, right so this is my third choice now I finally splurged and spent the money uh, it's a hefty $490 Canadian but I bought the Liat 6.5 body protection full body protection it comes with this lightweight mesh jacket so it's easy to put on just like you're putting a shirt on with the zipper zip it in a lot of people complain they're small but you know what for my body size it's a medium it has the D3O padding so it disperses the energy on impact plus it has a hard TPU plastic protection on the elbow a little bit on the forearm but not a lot compared to the uh, Alpine Stars uh, elbow protectors are a little longer but less in the foam so on both sides it's got ventilation for under your arms and what's really nice about the jacket it comes with a kidney belt so once you put the jacket on you strap in your kidney belt and your fully protected shoulders and elbows on this and you just put your jersey over it and you're super comfortable and a lot of aeration of the wind. Once that's on, you could put over or under your jersey the full chest protector. Now the chest protector is full front CE level 2. And you could see the difference on the padding thickness between the Violet and the Alpine Stars. It is a much softer type foam rubber along with full side rib protection. Whereas the Alpine Stars only had a little covering from the front. So once you lock this in place, and snap it in you're pretty much wrapped around back to front full protection on the sides of your ribs and kidneys so for me this was a better option in full safety it is a little more expensive there are pros and cons but this was my choice and I feel very comfortable with it what's nice is I put my jersey over my uh, shirt and then I put this over my jersey so when I have a stop I could just pop this off so I can cool down and relax a little better without this on. 
So those were my choices for my boots. And so far for, right, so far my knee protection, I've gone with Alpine Stars, the SX1 knee protectors and shin guards. I find them very, very comfortable, easy to put on. Basically, they've got some Velcro straps that once they're on, you can adjust it to your size easily. So when you're then putting them back and on, they just clip in and you're good to go. I've never had them move up and down. They're great articulation. They cost, stop for hyperextension as well. So that's great for your knee to stop for hyperextension. That's one thing I look for. So it's always good to look for a good knee pad like this. There's so many out on the market, but I found this very comfortable. It's got a nice uh, soft, uh, uh, thin felt liner, if you want to call it. It's only a CE1 protection. So it's like a thick felt. I find the airflow works great. So this is another great option. There's lots of knee protection out there, but this is my choice since I started off with the Alpine Star Series and I've stayed with it. And it's saved my uh, knee a couple of times when you go down and hit a rock just because you drop your bike or something like that. But I haven't had any major accidents where I've smashed into something with this, but just falling down onto your knee. This is super, it saves your knees and it's quite flexible and very, very easy to use, fits under your, uh, your pants. So that was my choice on knee protection. Okay, well now you need something to wear to cover all your gear. So, being a fox type guy, most of my extremity stuff, uh, jackets and pants, jerseys, are fox racing. My goggles are fox racing. I really like their products, great quality products, but this is something you guys could decide on your own if you want to buy stuff. So my first pair of pants was the uh, Fox 180 Leeds pants. So that was this pants here. It was the first pan I tried on. It has a little CE foam for your hip. It's not a lot of hip protection, but you know it will help your hip a little bit. Uh, there's probably some other pants out there that are it, but considering you're moving around a lot, it's a great pant. What I liked about this pant was is the knee vents. It's actually a little rubber cone. So when you're standing off-road trails, Air comes in here through that and helps circulate and it has some air holes up here by your crotch. So it helps bring the air up and keep your legs cool, especially when you're wearing your knee braces on a hot day. Uh, great pant, sturdy material, very easy to put on. Nice little ratchet buckle system here as well. It's quite easy to put on and off all the time. Just squeeze the buckle and it opens. But it has no pockets at all so I upgraded in the fall to the uh, Fox Legionnaire has the same hip protectors little piece of foam but it has zip down mesh openings to allow more airflow because the back is is mesh it's not a full material. There's a mess material here in the back to allow air to come through. And then with this open and you're riding, all the air passes through your leg and out the back mesh. So you're well aerated as well. But what I like is there's two side pockets on either side that you could put your phone or your wallet in when you're bouncing around or anything else you want to put in there. So that's why I ended up buying these uh, so I could uh, carry things in my pocket instead of having uh, to go into my tail bag all the time. It's very convenient at a gas station and stuff like that. Overall pants great. Both pants you definitely need to wear long underwear in the fall because or a windbreaker on top of it since they're always open with a mesh it allows a lot of air through. But as a summer and great rider it's a great pant. And then on top of that I have my regular jerseys. Uh, to go with my gear that usually goes over my uh, Liette body protection and then I'll put the uh, chest and uh, back guard on top of these so that's my upper clothing when riding so for off-roading I splurged and I bought the Klim Creus Pro 
which I got this color I can only find out of Europe and Canada the only place I found this at was Speed Alex Speed Addicts in California and it wasn't cheap this is $750 US so this was well over $1100 Canadian for me once it was shipped but Believe it or not, it is lighter than the carbon fiber AGV sport modular. I freaked out when I picked this up. It's like almost air in your hands. You barely feel the weight. That's how light it is. The great thing about this helmet too is the peak to keep the sun out of your eyes on the trails. So when your visor's a little dusty, it doesn't uh, bother or affect you. Well, usually what I do is uh, I ride on the highway with the dual sport to my destination. I'll pop that up and I'll put on a pair of Fox uh, goggles under here. It's got perfect room for my Fox goggles. They're currently stored in the shade right now. And what's really nice about it is the large opening for air to come into your face. Plus, it's longer. It's not a short, so you get a lot of air under here for your, your mouth for breathing when you're heavily panting on the, the trails, it's super. Uh, there is a small crown air opening here. I wish that was a little bigger to get more air when you're not moving as fast, but when you're open, you're getting a fair amount of air through the sides. There is full open air vents here on the side and in the back they're always on they're always open so on a cold day you better wear some kind of face protection a cargul inside to keep your face and chin warm because because of the large openings here this is mesh air just cold air just flows through the helmet when you're on the highway with it so this is definitely a little cooler but super for off-roading uh, the visor just pops off easy, quarter turn, you can pull that off and get rid of the visor and bring it with you. It also comes with the uh, chromatic visor, which is over $300, so I've only used that when I take this helmet on the road only. I don't want to have it scratched up, like here's a clear one already that's scratched up already because I've hit tree branches off-roading with this when I have my goggles on, but that's what it's for. I do recommend a visor when you're riding on the highway because last year I rode with just my goggles and a wasp went in and stung me in the face so that wasn't fun when you're riding at uh, 120k or uh, 70 miles an hour your face is being stung by a wasp so I recommend having the visor for sure and their pin shield set up already as well so uh, I've ridden this in the rain it's not bad what I find is when the water comes down it tends to wick into the felt and then it starts to saturate like a sponge and draw up and then you end up with your neck roll being all wet because the rain doesn't really wash away it, it draws up so that is my preferences in safety gear my evolution in safety gear and uh, i hope this helps somebody make decisions for themselves well, thanks again for watching and stay tuned for some more videos